and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, the good and people of the Jew. Hope you are today. Hope you are feeling grand and all is well in your world. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of How to Play Like the Legendary, Mr. John Frusciante. Yes. Uh, today we are going to cover the song Soul to Squeeze. Um, I have a few requests for this one. And it's one of my favourite all-time songs. And there's some really, really cool things in it. So, uh, I'm going to break the song down basically into kind of four or five parts. I think it's five, actually. Yeah, so we've got the intro riff. And then we've got the verse part, the chorus, the solo, and the middle eight. Yeah, so it's five parts. That's the kind of a breakdown. And I'm going to do the solo last... And I want to talk, I want to I want to kind of go through the song in order, so I say. But apart from the solo, which I'll leave to last. So we're going to talk about the intro first, and then the verse part, which is just the same part over every verse, apart from obviously the 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 parts when he's not playing and just improvising. But we'll talk about that later as well when we get to the solo bit. Um, talking about the chorus at the beginning and at the end of the song, it does slightly differ, not massively, but it does slightly differ. It gets a little bit bigger as it kind of goes. And we'll talk about the middle eight as well after the guitar solo, the big breakout bit. So, uh, without further ado, let's get on with the intro of Soul to Squeeze. Okay, so the song's uh, main core key is D minor. Uh, you want to be on your neck pickup on your guitar. It's it's neck pickup 100% pretty much. Well, unless you're counting live versions, live versions John will switch. But it's, it's predominantly neck pickup, uh, Soul to Squeeze. It doesn't really change uh, pickups that much, but he does live. He, he tends to go to his bridge pickup every now and again to do little solo bits, but most of the rhythm stuff and the original is all on net pickup. And you also need chorus uh, to make your song sound right. John's using chorus on it. Um, when they recorded it, on because uh, it obviously it was during the Blood Sugar era, um, it wouldn't have been the Boss C1 that John used to record the original with because. Um, as uh, it, it, it was broken at a point in time. I think it was a DOD chorus. I think a, a, a DOD chorus he used uh, for the uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. But live, um, it was always the C1 from uh, you know when he when he rejoined the band and whatnot. So it was always kind of a C1 chorus after that. Uh, any chorus pedal will get close to that kind of nice. <laughs> shimmery kind of clean sound you know you, you don't need a c1 you know just because john used it doesn't mean you need it you know you, you can get around kind of pretty much anything with chorus you know a lot of chorus pedals will do the c1 tone really nicely so uh so it's chorus with a kind of a slow kind of rate as well <laughs> kind of here da, 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 da. but it's it's quite depthy there's quite a lot of depth to it and stuff so uh i'm using the chorus that's set inside my zoom g2 today um and that's my favorite chorus uh i just love the chorus inside the zoom it just is immense okay so without further ado let's get on with soul to squeeze okay so the song's in d minor but the intro starts with an a chord so it's a string open uh your first finger wants to be barring the second fret on the D string and second fret on the G string. So A string open, then D string second fret, G string second fret. And that's your first chord. So you pick down in that order, A, D, G. And then you get this bit. So what you're doing is kind of going A, D, G, A, and then you're going up to the fourth fret on your G string and bending it up a half a, half a step, not a, not a tone, just a half. Just like, not a full tone. It's not that. It's a real little bend. So, so A, D, G, A, G. And then back to your second fret on your G string. And then you get this uh, little lick, which is. So you're on your second fret on your D string, and you hammer onto the fourth fret on your D string. Like that. And then you finish up on the G string on the second fret. So the whole thing so far. Slow. 
kind of a pulse to this song you gotta feel it's really yeah, it's got a real kind of awesome kind of bouncy kind of feel to it okay so that's the first leg of the intro the next one is you go back to the same a same thing again so a d g uh, a, D, G, D. That kind of picking part. Did I say A string the first time around I said it? On the first one? If I did apologise, it's A, D, G, D. And then you go to your bed. So A, D, G, D. And then bed. So if I said A string, I'm sorry everybody. That's me being silly. So, uh, okay. So moving along. Uh, what? Um, to the next... A uh, little riff, which is this one, which is really, really cool. That little slide up stage. So, what you do is you're going A, D, G, A, D, G again. So, you're doing that twice. But you can hear there's like a, like a, like a double, there's like a jump in it almost. Dun, 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 dun. So the next time you go to your A and D, it's a little quicker than it was the first time around. And then what you do is you slide up on the G string to the uh, sixth fret on the G string, and then you go to your fifth fret on the B string, and then you slide down to your fourth fret on the G string, and then you finish up on your second fret on your yeah, G string. Like that. So the whole thing so far is this. Yeah. And uh, then, so that's the first two things. And then the second, t uh, the third time. It's back to... Oh, I said, sorry. Then we go to this lick the third time around. So it starts exactly the same. But we, instead of going... We go... So it's the same thing, uh, same thing as the first time around. I hope this is making sense. Um... So you're hammering on from the second to the fourth on the D string, and then you hammer on the from the G string second fret to the D string, uh, G string fourth fret, and then that's actually sorry no, it's not a hammer on on the G string. You play uh, the notes, so all so the second fret is fretted. Fourth fret is fretted and back to the second fret, which is fretted as well. So that's a hammer on on the D string, and then and it's kind of important to keep the A string ringing out, the open A string uh, ringing out. So yeah, you know, that throughout the entire section, the A string is droning away. You only hit it once, but you don't really want to be. You know, you don't, it doesn't want to be that. It wants to be constantly droning away. It just fills out the, the intro. Okay, so that's the first three. The fourth is this one. Which is really cool. I I don't know what that reminds me of, but it's really, really cool. It's kind of odd as well. It's kind of strange to be there. So that's this one. Oh, that, sorry. So you're just picking the A, A, A chord again. And then you, you go to your, your G note. 
So you kind of alternate between the A chord and the G. It's almost like an ACDC kind of thing. So uh, it's, the, it's the G note up on the third fret on your low E. And you're kind of um, hitting the, the double stop here. So the, the, the second fret D and the second fret G. So that whole thing so far is, uh, is there. Uh, so I'm gassed by the whole thing. So it's always the same. It's like, you know, when you start teaching, it's like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I know how to play this song. And as soon as you click record on the camera, your brain just goes, no, nah, I don't actually understand what I'm doing. So you have to kind of keep playing it to realize what you're doing. So anything I get wrong, like I always say, I do apologize for, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So, you know, you can correct it. You can see uh, what I'm doing and, and make corrections if I if I say something stupid and totally wrong. So I do apologize for that. Um, it's it blooming hard. I can tell you that for free. Okay, so the whole thing so far, I'll play it at speed. <laughs> I can't play it without doing that first. So that's the next little bit. So that's kind of like riff four, so to say. So you've got the intro. That's the first one. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Just like, you know, you just alternating between the G note and the A chord. And there's also times where John would just bend the G note. Like, so you go. Yeah, which is a kind of a Jimmy Page kind of thing almost, really. It's like at the end of the, the heartbreak, the intro of heartbreak. Record. You know, that thing. So that's that. So that's the first kind of like, you know, uh, four or five rows. So I'll do it really slow and hopefully you'll be able to see. If anything I've missed or haven't explained very well, hopefully you'll be able to see. I'll try and get my fingers out of the way as much as possible. Okay, so, do it really slow. Sorry, hit the wrong string. back to the beginning and then that time you don't do the you just go and then after that you want to be borrowing your full a chord with uh i y you can do it either way but i would recommend doing it with one finger so you're instead of just playing the a d and g strings now you're bringing in the b string on the second fret but you bring it in gradually as the build-up comes in so after so like that so after the um that time so uh, after the yeah Go. You can hear that that note gradually come in. You know, and then and then you're into the, the the main kind of verse riff, so to say. So the whole intro is this. I'll try and do it really, really slow. And again, hopefully, if I explained anything um, well enough, which I have tendency to do, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing with my right hand and my left hand, and uh, you know, correct what I've said because I'm, you know, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit stupid and your, your memory goes blank and your brain goes blank when you start teaching. So, hopefully anything I've missed, you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so. slow was it Dave so let's do it again slower <laughs> Okay, 
Okie, so that's the whole intro of Soul to Squeeze. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. And I hope you make sense. I've got an itchy foot, everybody. Sorry. Ah! So I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing now. I hope it, and hopefully it, it makes sense. You know, and like, you know, that bit is... The hardest bit on that intro bit is getting that... That bit in right. Because it sounds... It's kind of um a different rhythm. It almost kind of like stalls it out, so to say. It's kind of... Yeah, it's, it's quite strange. And also on that, uh, and there also is something I, I, I failed to mention is on that kind of intro bit, John sometimes will play the D string and the A string. I, I noticed that one the last time around and I could hear it and I was like, oh yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, sorry, I will be remembering things as we go because I'm a bit stupid. So yeah, so on that A, on that first riff, you go A, D, G, and then you can go back to your D string or your A string. It really doesn't matter because it's the same chord, but this is the this is the D string. And this is the A string. So it, it's it's hard to hear the difference to be honest with you. So you can kind of do either. And John, I've heard him hit the D string. I've heard him hit the A string. So it, it, it varies. You know, it's again, it's just how you feel that you know and what you want to kind of go for really. Okay, so that's the intro of Sod Squeeze. Like I said, I hope. That's okay. I really do hope that's okay for you. Okay, so let's get into the main verse riff. And I say, this verse riff is quite... It's got some really fiddly bits in it. And it's got a lot of kind of Jimi Hendrix walking into chords kind of lines and stuff like that. So, But it's really, really cool. Okay, so out of this... You want to hit the G note on your low E string. So after... And then you hit that note, and then you go to an F major. So, um, I forget. Oh yeah, John. Yeah, John plays this two different ways. Sometimes he plays it like this, and sometimes he plays it with his thumb. So I'm gonna play it with my thumb because that's just the way I'm comfortable doing it. So, um, but you can play it like that. But you need to get the full chord. So it, the whole thing. So it just, it's just an F major chord. But my thumb is fretting the first fret on the low E string. My ring finger is on the third fret on the A string. Little finger is on the third fret on the D string. Uh, middle fingers on the G string on the second fret. And my first finger is barring the B and high E string. You need the full chord. So. And what you do is you hit the bass note first. After that G, you hit the F. So you go to the F note, fir uh, first fret on your low E. So like that. So And you can you can also do it like that if you want. I've just fallen into that. Again, it's it doesn't matter how you play the F. Like you know, like that, like that, or like that, as long as you play the F and you get Yeah, you know, as long as you've got the D G B and high E strings in, all is well. But it again it just depends how you feel. So so far. So yeah, changed that time. I went to the full chord. Um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Just play how you feel. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, so you hit the bass note first, and then you hit the chord, which is a very Jimi Hendrix way of of playing. Uh, Jimmy would invariably hit a bass note first, and then the chord, like in Little Wing, Boulder's Love, stuff like that. Um, because it, it just kind of gives it context and sets it kind of up nicely. Okay, so. So that's all we do for the F. So. And you can up pick it, you down, down pick it. However you feel. Play it however you feel, because it, it doesn't matter if you up pick or down pick. It really doesn't matter. I up pick, but again, it, it, it doesn't matter. You can down pick it, and I'm sure I down. I'm sure I'll down pick it before the end of the video. Okay, so yeah, so we get an F, and then we do this, which is a hammer on from the third fret to the fifth fret on the low E, and then we end up on the third fret on the A string, the C note. So 
So, so far, out, coming out of that chorus, we have this. Uh, sorry, the intro. And then it's the same thing again with the C major chord. We um, hit the bass note first and then hit the whole chord. So that sets you up for that note. And then what you want to do is uh, John brings, and I, I play it kind of the same way again. It's just through comfort and, and ease, really, especially having your form over the top. Hit the bass note first on your third fret A string, and then you want to be barring the D, G, and B strings on the fifth fret to make the full C major. So you're going from that F major to C major. So bass note first on the F, and then full chord. Then do the little walking run. That, and then you end up on your bass note on your C, and then play the full chord. That's the rhythm you want. Okay, so that's so out of that in that. So the next bit is a little bit fiddly. We need to get to a D minor is our next chord, but John does this kind of slide up, slide down thing like this. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. So what he's doing after the C major chord, he slides his first finger to the fifth fret on the A string, and then slides up to the eighth fret on the A string, and then it's the F note, basically sliding back up to an F, and then slides back down to the D note on the fifth fret, same string A string. So. The slide from the C to the D is almost inaudible, but it is there. He slides it. You can see him doing it. So. But it's so quick, it's kind of hard. So if I do it really hard to see and hard to hear, but if you do it really slow. So it's that. So you slide it, as I say, from a fifth fret to the eighth fret and back down to the fifth fret again on the, on the A string. And, then, and again, it's the same thing again. Bass note first, full chord afterwards. So you're just doing a B minor chord here. So first finger on the fifth fret A string, ring finger, seventh fret on the D string, little finger, seventh fret G string, and your middle finger wants to be on the sixth fret on the B string. No high E and no low E. Just those four strings, A, D, G, and B. So the whole thing. And then this little phrase ends up with moving this D note, the, your first finger D note on the fifth fret on your A string to your low E string on the um, uh, sixth fret. But keeping those fingers where they are for the D minor, or going up to that B flat, which is technically a B flat over D minor chord now. So you go from a D minor to that. So, so the whole thing. So that's the first part, and I'll do it really slow one more time, just for luck. And again, always hit the bass note before you hit the chord. Okay. And then we go back to a D minor shape. And then we go up here to an F major. So it's the same chord as down here, but just next octave above. And again, you're going for that kind of John Fashanti shape. So first fret is on the um, eighth fret on your A string. And you're using your ring finger to bar the D, G, and B strings on the 10th fret. And you need those, again, it's just A, D, G, and B strings. So. And then you go down to your C again. 
Then we go to a G minor. And then what John does, he actually puts his little finger down onto the high E string on the fifth fret. And does that. So it's kind of like he puts it on and then takes it away. And that could be quite difficult. And again, you, it's quite hard to do this, the G minor, with a bar chord because, you, you know, you, you can get like a weird seventh chord, which isn't there. Okay, so the whole thing so far, really slow. Coming, uh, fr coming from the intro, we'll do the whole intro really slow into the verse riff because once we get to that C, we stop playing. And we're into the, uh, into the first verse where John doesn't play anything uh, for the first few goes round. Sorry, everybody. Really, I think it's my dinner. My dinner's repeating on me. Okay, so the whole thing. Uh, I'll try and do it as slow. I'll try and do it quite slow, not ridiculously slow, because we'll be here all day. So I'll try and do it really slow. <laughs> This is really difficult to get in. This is really difficult to get in. And it comes in before you get to the D the second time around. So first time around is... Speed it up. And then the next time around you do this. Which is not easy. It's really hard to get from, from that to that. But, so it's the same thing, you go from F to C, do you slide to your, from your D to your F back to your D, and then you put a diddly dum in, which is uh, a hammer on between the 10th and the 12th fret on your G string, and then a pull off, and then you end up on the 12th fret, uh, yeah, yeah, hammer on from the 10th to the 12th on the G, pull off, and then you end up on the 12th fret on the D string. So it's a diddly dumb there. And it just comes out of a D minor pentatonic. And then you go to your B flat note and then to your, you know, the bottom half of your D minor. It's really hard, but really slow, it's this. And one more time, even, even slower. Diddly Dumb sounds really slow. S sounds really funny slow. Diddly Dumb. It's like Ned Flanders is slowed down on a vinyl record player. Anyway, okay, so. So the whole thing at speed is this. Coming in for. So no Diddly Dumb the first time. jumped ahead of chord there and missed out of C but you get the hopefully you get the idea so that's the main verse riff and that doesn't change that's the basic thing so after that you stop playing and Anthony comes in with singing I've got a bad disease by the way um up from my brain is where I believe da, 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 da. Uh, it's got me by my soul to squeeze after he says it's got me by my soul to squeeze you come back in again with a slide <laughs> and I don't I, I don't remember if John does that on the live on the studio version but it sounds really cool so, back into... Now said demons of greed. So that, 
after that Demons Agreed line, you come into the chorus. So, we've got the intro. Hopefully, you know, hopefully that's okay. We've got the verse, which has the, di the fiddly diddly. There you go, that's a new one for you. Fiddly diddly, everybody. Um, Ned Flanders Ahoy. Um, yeah, so we've got the verse, we've got the intro, we've got the verse now. So let's go on to the chorus. Now, the chorus has three different variations. First time around... Uh, the chords are, well, I'll tell you the chords first. The chords are F major, C major, D minor, and B flat ma uh, major. And then also the song builds back into the verse with D minor. I'm going to give you, that where Anthony sings, I'm going to give you some of my good time. It's D minor, A minor, B flat major, and then you're back to your F. And all these chords resolve so lovely to the F. It's just unreal. It's just brilliant chord writing. It really is. Okay, so, but, so let's get to the chorus. John doesn't do four chords. He doesn't do the bass note. He just does the, tri just does the triad. So the F is just 10th fret D, uh, D string, 10th fret G string, and 10th fret B string. And then that's your F, and then your C is just basically leaving your first finger where it is, so 10th fret D, uh, D string, and then your your middle finger wants to be going 9th fret G string, and then your first finger wants to be on the 8th fret uh, B string. So F, D, uh, C, and then D, which is just this kind of like A minor shape, so to say. Um, your middle finger's on the 7th fret D, ring finger is on the 7th fret G, and your first finger is on the 6th fret B. So that's the triad for D minor, and then you've got another triad here for B flat major, which is first finger on the B string on the 6th fret, your middle finger wants to be on the 7th fret D, uh, G string, and your ring finger wants to be on the... 8th fret D string. Okay, so that's it. So that's your F, your C, your D, and your B. Okay, and what do, what John does the first time is he actually fades them in, he violins them in with his volume control. So he hits the chord and then rolls the volume in. That. that can get a bit used to but if as, if that doesn't sound gorgeous i don't know what does that sounds it sounds heavenly absolutely heavenly that sounds okay so that's the first type that's the first chorus that's what john's doing he's just rolling them in and you can do that with your volume or you can do it with a volume pedal or a volume patch if you've got like a, a, a fade in kind of thing if you've got more effects they normally have that kind of thing okay and to come out of that you do this so if you say this is the last time. So you're doing a full D minor then. Then an A minor, which is uh, thumb on the 5th fret on your low E. Yeah, ring finger wants to be on the 7th fret A. Little finger, 7th fret D. And then your first finger wants to bar the G, B and high E strings on the 5th uh, fret. And then you go to your B major, which is first, uh, your thumb wants to be barring the 6th fret on the low E. Uh, ring finger wants to be on the 8th fret A. Little finger, 8th fret D. Uh, middle finger, 7th fret uh, G. And first finger barring the B and the high E strings on the 6th fret. <laughs> And they're four chords, and you hit that as hard as you can to bring yourself back into the verse because that's a kind of like a lead in back into the verse. So, whole chorus is this. Line and the second verse. 
Okay, so second verse, John isn't doing much of anything. He's just improvising. And I'll talk about that when we get to the solo. So for this point in time, forget the second verse altogether. And it's a shorter verse than the first and the third. Um, it's like a half a verse. It's half of it. So you don't really play anything in the second verse other than little guitar fills, which we'll talk about when we get to the solo. Okay, so after that second verse, the second chorus, you're playing the exact same thing again. But this time you're not fading in and you're not strumming. You're hitting the chords, the triads, once. Until you get to the end. Until you get to this bit. And then you just have a guitar solo. Okay, so that's the second chorus. That's what you're doing there. So you've gone from a fade-in, which is quite nice and gentle, to being quite aggressive on the second chorus. You're gradually building it. That's what's going on. So second chorus is you're just hitting the chords once. One, two, three, four. solo okay so that's the chorus and i'll talk about the third chorus right now so the last chorus you are strumming the chords chorus you're strumming those triads up until like you know the end because obviously the end chorus is, is a double chorus okay and and that's it and you can if you want in that final chorus play the full chord so the full f full c full d and full b flat if you want you don't have to you can stick to the triads it doesn't matter because flea's got your back when it comes to the bass notes so you don't have to play the bass note flea's doing that but if you want it to sound really big like John does sometimes do, you can play a full chord, full chords. And John sometimes plays full chords and sometimes doesn't. Sometimes the first two times around, John will play the triads. And then the last two times around the last chorus, he'll play the full chords to make the last part of the chorus massive. So he'll do this. <laughs> And then, the, then there's, sorry, then the second time around, it'd be. Yeah, just to make that chorus a little bit bigger. I totally messed up there, but hopefully you understand what I mean. Sorry, everybody. Ugh, I don't know. Okay, so, where are we? So, that's the choruses. First chorus is the volume fades. Second chorus, you're just hitting the chords once until, obviously, the build-up into the uh, guitar solo. Third chorus, you're strumming because the last chorus wants to be big and you end up on your F. You finish on your F. So you, that's, the, that's, the, that's the song's final chord. Okay, so that's the intro. Hopefully we cover the intro, the verse riff, which happens with the diddly dum, uh, which is very fiddly. That will take a bit of getting used to. It. It's quite hard to get. Uh, that's the choruses, one, two, and three. Say the last chorus being a double chorus. So let's talk about the middle eight now. So coming out of the solo, the, uh, coming out of that bit, which we'll get to in but a moment, I will not leave you hanging on the solo, I promise. I'm going to teach you the actual album solo because it's just amazing. And then we'll talk about how to improvise and add little fills here and there. Okay, so the middle eight bit, where it breaks out and really big after the chorus, is D minor. <laughs> C major, A minor. So out of the out of the solo, it's and again, it 
it's that Hendrix thing of hitting the bass note first on the D minor and then hitting the chord. Not on the C though, the C is all played at once. And you kind of do this lifting up thing. You can actually, before you go to the A minor, hit, hit all your open strings. Like that. And on the fourth time around, when you get to that A minor, you go A minor, B flat major, which is a power chord, basically. First finger wants to be on your A string, first fret. So that finger there. And then your ring finger wants to be barring the D, G, and B strings on the third fret. And then to your F. So, A, B flat, major, F major. And then you're back into the third verse. So that's the middle eight. So coming out of the solo. Last time. A, B flat, and F. And then you stop immediately to let that second that, that third verse come in so you don't play at all there okay so that's the whole shebang so to say rhythm guitar wise so the whole thing is this i'll kind of do a compressed version <laughs> kind of idea of a song so to say so um let's move on now to the guitar solo so we'll cover the guitar solo first and then we'll talk at the end about little uh fills <laughs> kind of like you know coming out of d minor pentatonic okay so guitar solo is solely d minor pentatonic doesn't stray from d minor pentatonic at all it's almost the perfect minor pentatonic solo it's just gorgeous so this scale <laughs> From 10th, 10th fret all the way down to 12th, uh, sorry, 13th and 12th fret. You're just your D minor minor pentatonic. That scale, it, it's, it's all in there, apart from the unison bends down. That, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so the solo starts with this lick. I've got a hair on my fretboard. So what you're doing here is you're bending up. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what happened there. Camera went a bit funny. Okay, so, um, yeah, so where are we? Yeah, so you're bending up a 12th fret. So you're bending up a tone to basically the 14th fret note. An A note. And then you release that bend. So bend up, release, and then you go to your 10th fret G string. 
and then go back to your 12th fret and then bend up again. Like that. On the second bend up on the 12th fret, you don't release the bend. You just go from that bent note to the 10th fret. Fretted, not bent. That's phrase one. And it's, it's already gorgeous. Okay, so the next one is this one. You bend up your 12th fret again. Again, a tone. And then you have to get your finger onto the 13th fret on the B string while that note is bent. So while you're bending up the, D, the G string, you ought to be getting to the 13th fret on the B string. Like that. So. This is, this is the next phrase I say. So. So once you bend up, once you hit that note. Bend, play that note again with the 12th fret on the G string bent string. Play that twice. Release it to the 10th, uh, release back down to the 10th fret on your G string. And then you do a hammer on from the uh, 10th fret D string to the 12th fret G string, a uh, D string. And then you finish up on the 10th fret on your G string. The whole thing so far is this. Okay. Okay. The next lick is this. And it's quite difficult this one because you've got to bend up the G string with one finger, which John does quite a lot. Uh, it's a real kind of mainstay thing of John. You actually see him doing it quite a lot as well. Uh, that interview with John Shanty where he sat on that um, on that on that on that settee uh, during the Stadium Arcadium tour, where he's showing you how to play under the bridge and all sorts of little funk bits. Um, he does it there. You see him doing it there. Yeah, it's really, really, it's quite a difficult thing to do, but it's really, really cool and it's very John esque. And he does it in the Dost solo as well. You can hear him doing it in the Dost solo. So, yeah, uh, where are we? Next leg. So it starts again, it's exactly the same. After that 12th fret bend, you bend up the 10th fret a tone. So you bend, you're bending it up to the 12th fret now. But you kind of really want to do it your first time. Because you've got your... It kind of falls. If you, if you want to kind of switch your fingers... It, it's doable, but it's a lot easier to try and do it with your first finger, and that's how that's how John does it. And then he just hammers on from the tenth fret D string to the twelfth fret G, uh, D string. So the whole thing so far is this. to think of it now i'm not sure that's actually in there you can put it in if you want I, it's there in one version i think i'm just kind of like amalgamating versions now from live version to uh album version which is fine it, it doesn't matter i mean it, it it's all the same it's the same song so always well okay so yeah so where are we yeah and then the next lick is like a real standard blues Jimi hendrix lick Which is real, no, a classic blues lick. So you're bending up the 12th fret again on the D G string. And then you go to your 10th fret high E. And then you go to your 13th fret B. Bend up, release. Go to your, on the 13th fret B, bend up and release. And then release to the 10th fret on your B string.
and then you do these unison bends. And, and what unison bends are is basically where you, this is your root note, and then you bend up the G string to go to that root, to the same note. So you eventually hear that uh, the G string that I'm bending up eventually reaches the, uh, the, the, uh, the A note that I'm playing on the B string. It is an A, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure I've got that right. I don't know. So yeah. So this is unison bend. So you start off uh, between first finger wants to be on the 10th fret on the B and you want to be bending up the 12th fret on the G. And then you go down to your uh, first finger on the 8th and your uh, these fingers on the G string are bending up the uh, 10th fret uh, G. And then you go down to your first finger on the 6th fret and you're bending up the G string on the 8th fret. And then you go down one fret. So first finger's now on the 5th. And these fingers on the G string are on the 7th. Uh, and then you go to your middle 8 bit. Where you, you know, the breakout bit. So the whole solo, really slow, is this. And I'll try and do it as best I can Django Reinhardt style. So you, my fingers don't get in the way and it doesn't get too cluttered. Okay. was that b string <laughs> okay so yeah so that's the whole song i'll do it one more time just for look and i'll try and do it really slow it's really i can't obviously do that with uh, jungle right style but i'll try and do it as best i can things down i'm gonna have to do it full speed sorry everybody that was really i lost it there i lost the f the feel and the rhythm of it That's the guitar solo to solid squeeze, and it's absolutely perfect for the song. It is absolutely perfect for the song. There are there are some things John does live which I absolutely adore, where he'll do which is really cool little lick to put put in, which is bending up the tenth fret on the B string with your first finger, just a half half step. So you're just bending it to that note. And then you're resolving it to your 10th fret G string. My favourite thing he does is this. <laughs> he walks it down. Which is awesome. Again, um, what he's doing is... see what I'm doing there. It's all on the G string. And then you resolve on your D string. Um, there's also another little that you can point I've just remembered. A little diddly dumb. Uh, so it's, it's a diddly dumb between the um, 10th and the uh, 11th on the B string. And then you finish up on the 10th fret on your G string. Which is really, really nice. 
Okay, so let's talk quickly about improvising and messing around with the solo for uh, Soul to Squeeze. I know you said scar tissue. That would have been funny. Okay, so go away, phone. I'm busy. Um, the whole song solos come out of D minor pentatonic. So 10th fret low E, 13th fret low E, 10th fret A, 12th fret A, 10th fret D, 12th fret A, uh, D, 10th uh, fret G, 12th fret G, 10th fret B, 13th fret B, high E on the 10th fret, and high E on the 13th fret. Okay, so with that scale, you can improvise your own solo. As long, but if you kind of keep certain phrases, you kind of add to them. So. Into, into the into the uh, into the middle bit, which was great because I totally s messed that one up again. Warts and all, everybody. Warts and all. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so you can kind of mess around with that, but add these extra notes in. So the bottom half of your scale. No, there you've got that. But add in the F major scale into this. So this is just your F major scale on the bottom of your minor pentatonic. So you've got this top half. I'll try and do it with one finger. And then your bottom half from your G string. 10th, uh, 12th on the G string. B string, 10th. B string, 11. B string, 13. High E string, 10. High E string, 12. And high E string, 13. And these notes, just give it an extra melodic value and you can half step bend into them. Uh, which is in there. Uh, okay, so add those extra notes in there and you can kind of like mess around to your heart's content. And the same thing goes for the verses where John's not playing. The second verse where uh, Fleece just going... kind of just in the gaps where I'm, I'm, Anthony's not singing let me see if I can just get a kind of loop so while Flea's doing his bass line and Anthony's doing his singing you can kind of add in little fills from D minor pentatonic with that F major scale over the top. Uh, something, you know, it's like this. And adding in the ninth fret on the G string is a real big note to add. John, John uses this backside, so to say, of the minor pentatonic a lot. So you can kind of... Pentatonic scale on its own does sounds really melodic over and, and really kind of melodic over the thing. So I hope there's a few ideas in there you can use. Like I say, that note of a D is just gorgeous. It's got a real sad sound to it. And I say over that back in track, it, you know, going into going down, descending into that note sounds gorgeous. You know, it, it just sounds a real nice um vibe to it okay so is there anything else i need to talk about oh yeah and also um in the last verse after the middle eight after you come back uh, so you know into the third verse you can actually do kind of volume swells like that again just using B, d minor pentatonic don't go crazy just get those those f major notes in and that and that E note. 
on the ninth fret and the G string in, just to add a little bit more melodic value. And I say, uh, I will be doing a video at some point soon where we're... Uh, well, actually, it's in my Rory Gallagher series. Unlocking the neck in D minor is in my Rory Gallagher series. I, I, I spoke about it now, and there's a diagram of all the notes you can use in D minor. So you can kind of like get stuff like this going on. <laughs> So once you kind of like get your five positions of your pentatonic scale, you can kind of scale the neck and, and, and act melodically. But again, you can fade in notes and bends and stuff like that, just like you do the first chorus and whatnot. Um, is there anything else I have forgotten? Is there anything else I want to talk about? Oh, one, one, one cool thing to do uh, for the breakout middle bit, that, you know, is to switch to your bridge pickup. Uh, you don't have to do it, and John doesn't always do it, but after the... When you come into the, bre the breakout middle eight bit, if you switch to your bridge pickup, it's bigger. And then you can do this. <laughs> does do a, a pick scratch into the uh, third verse, which is quite cool. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I've heard John do that a few times. It's quite cool. Or just stop there. Don't even play the F. You know, sometimes Ooh. just hit the F. What? Or don't play the F at all. It's totally up to you. There is a lot of feel involved in this song. There's a real slow melodic bounce to it where it's really important to nail that feel of the song otherwise it won't be and in the intro exactly it's got that feel to it it's really important to get that okay so um yeah so that's the intro that's the verse riff with the diddly dums uh the chorus the three choruses first one's faded in second one's just hit once third one is strummed um middle eight you can be on your bridge pickup or your neck pickup but make sure you switch to a neck pickup before the um third verse comes in with your before you come in with that uh and then obviously the the, the third chorus is just strummed uh and uh yeah and you know and just mess around with your d minor pentatonic like i say with that f major on the bottom and half step bend and one step bend, that kind of thing and that note there you know uh and just mess around just have fun Seriously, just have fun with it and mess around and find out what you like the sound of and what you don't like the sound of. And uh, and listen to as many versions of John doing it as possible and try and figure out the little licks that John's using. And, um, you know, and, and, and try and incorporate them and steal some of them and, and mess around with that. But uh, I really, 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 really hope this video has been informative on Salt Squeeze. I hope it's helped anybody out who's, there who's, who's learning Salt Squeeze. It's one of my favourite songs and I'm terrified I haven't done it justice. I hope I have. If I haven't, I do apologise immensely. Um, but yeah. Um, it's actually not as been as painful as uh, some songs to teach, actually, this one. But it has been difficult. Your brain just goes... But as soon as you press... As soon as the little red light comes on the camera, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing! It's quite amusing. Anyway. Um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. And I will see you again very soon for another video. I really hope this has been informative. If you're learning Salt Squeeze, I hope it's helped. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again very soon, everybody. can you play okay so thank you very much everybody i'll see you again have a great morning afternoon good evening have a great weekend i'll see you on monday for a cr120 cr60 comparison video that should be fun so i'll see you then have a great one goodbye now thank you very much for watching hope this has uh been informative